Davis from Nick Davis Sports Psychology. And today I'm joined by a good friend of mine, uh, Kevin Dillon, who's uh, head boxing coach at Lions ABC. So thanks for joining us today, yeah, Kev. Wonderful. Well, thank you for inviting me down, in fact. <coughs> so the first question I'd like to ask you is to tell me a brief history about yourself and what you've accomplished. Well, I'm 35 years old. I'm married to a wonderful woman called Katie Dillon and I'm the father of a beautiful young girl called Jasmine Dillon. Um, I had a bit of a rocky start in life. At the age of three years old, I had viral meningitis where it took my vision. Uh, I was completely blind in my left eye and partial sight in my right eye. So growing up was difficult, going through different things and trying to find yourself. As a child, I was always trying to be normal, trying to fit in and because of bad teachers at the time, they'd point out that I wasn't normal. And that was extremely difficult growing up as a, as a child. And you find your own way. Um, so I found mechanisms to deal with trying to explain by writing poetry and other things when I wasn't as confident as I am to this day, where I can just express things. Um, so I went into writing and I, I had different ways of working out, having a short temper and doing things that I thought at the time made me a man, scrapping and ducking and diving. It's not until you become a, an adult and a father especially that I found that was the wrong way. And that's why I, Nick's been asking me for years to do something like this, but I, I hadn't got the confidence to make myself vulnerable and show all my, my quirks. And now at this age, I'm, I'm willing to do so. Uh, I was always involved in boxing. My dad's a GB coach at, um, with the Olympics. So I was brought up boxing and when I discovered that I couldn't compete because I couldn't pass the medical, I was distraught. And then good friends like Quinton Hillocks and Pete and Darby were all boxing. And I remember on one show at the cop form, all three of them stopped their lad on the same night and I hit the bottle bad thinking that could have been me. I was better than them. And when they could do and I couldn't, even though I loved them, my brothers, I begrudged them for it. But when I was 18, my dad said to me, he goes, Kev, why don't you give all your experience and your knowledge back to the game? So I started coaching. Uh, we started doing the Bayless classes. And, but it took a lot of nerve for me at the time, and I realised that now. Because I couldn't compete, I always thought, well, would they take me seriously? Uh, and that's why I'm opening up now. So I want everyone to know about my flaws. And if I can do it, everyone else can do it. And that was when I was 18, so the best part of 18 years ago, when I did my level one and level two. Since then, we've produced national champions like Connor Jones and Os uh, Osama Mohammed, who's gone and boxed for England and Bulgaria, the schoolboy um, European games. We've had loads of different boxers and Midland champions, national champions. But that, to me, isn't the cream. The cream, is the Ashley Nixons, and it's the wrongans, should we say, who have had nothing in their lives, and then you give them that part of their lives, and you've turned them from not a very nice person to an absolute pillar of the community. And that's the brotherhood that boxing and sport gives us. And that's not just here at the Lions Boxing Club, that's clubs all around the country and around the world, being a part of something that's bigger than yourself. Just touching on Ashley Nixon, um what, what has he become, just for people who don't know who he is? <coughs> so he's a boxer under yourself, and you trained him, and uh, like you say, chose trod the wrong path for a while, but what's he doing now? Well, Ashley, through boxing, he, uh, he went to prison. It was a, we, we had him originally as a, a kid who was referred to as from Connections. Connections was like a, a youth, um, young offenders thing. We got him into boxing, and he boxed at a good standard. Then he went to prison uh, through doing naughty things. And while he was in prison, he found God, but was very ashamed. It, it seemed, mm. it's terrible when you're ashamed of doing something that makes you better. Mm. And he come back to me and said, Kev, you should save my life once, would you do it again? And we got him boxing, and we got him off the naughty stuff. And he won a, a novice Midlands Championship. He's on the wall out there on the champion's wall. And he started telling me about God. And I said, well, if it makes you better, bro, go into it and then through the church and then they've put him on a course and he's now a pastor he's moved to Wakefield where he's going to be starting his own church and wow. but he said he says even though I'm not personally a Christian I'm a 
a man of God, but in my own little way. Mm. He says, the teachings from the club showing love, love everyone, to give everyone respect, gave him the strength and the confidence to do what he's doing now. So that brings me on nicely to the next question. So we're talking boxing, we're talking your journey, we're talking life journeys, we're talking anybody really here. <clears throat> so for you, Kev, with all your struggles and everything that you've come through and achieved and all the things you've done, how important is the mental game? People often make me laugh. They'll come and pay someone £20, £30 for a dietitian and a, a strength conditioning coach and one-to-ones. If you can't get this right, gang, nothing will fall in. I've worked with Nick for many years, getting through my demons. I did a counselling course. I was going to be a counselling uh, when I was 21. And um, it didn't work for me. I, uh, I've got a drinking problem. You've got a drinking problem. I've got the regurgitation of what I was saying. It just got my back up. But then work with Nick uh, through the NLP, finding the triggers for what makes me angry, for what makes me sad, the reason why I drink, the reason why I don't sleep. Help me to be a better man, a better teacher, mm -hmm. hopefully a better husband and father. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> the, the mental game, what would you say importance in percentage-wise in terms of for anybody who wants to achieve something in boxing or in life, in goals, what percentage would you say is mental versus physical, would you, would you, would you say? You've got to look after your body. But if I haven't got the mind, the body won't be right. Mm. So I would say it's a good 70, 70 out of 100 percent. It's got to be your mind. Like on an airplane, before you give your child air, you've got to get your, your own mask on. And that's the same with your mind. If I can't believe in myself mm. and love myself, how am I going to do it to someone else? Yeah. And I, I, I like the saying, take care of yourselves as well as each other. May your God bless you. If you don't believe in God, find someone to believe in, even if it's yourself. So if you can't believe in yourself or in something, you will always be lost. And that nicely t t takes me to the next question, is what advice would you give for people who are struggling out there or finding it quite hard, whatever they're doing, whether it's boxing, whether it's sport, whether it's life, what advice would you give them? Life is difficult for everyone, and now I promise you, whether you're born with a million pounds in your pocket or born with nothing, we all go through struggles. And I remember me and Nick up here many moons ago, and we had a, a boxing squad, and from super lightweights to super heavyweights. And Nick said, he goes, what are we all frightened of? Getting hurt. So when I love getting hurt, uh, being ill. And then Nick said, embarrassment. And he said, everyone look at the ground. What do you mean? He goes, who here would rather go into that ring behind me have to not knock out of them instead of asking a girl out or doing public speaking. And every single one of them put their hands up. He said, so you will put yourself in physical harm than to go and do this to make you feel uncomfortable. And everyone agreed. Mm. And I think that has been one of the greatest lessons I've learned on my journey. We all get embarrassed. We all want the same things in life, to be loved, to be respected. There's a difference between getting on a karaoke and singing Blue Moon and purposely making yourself look the fool, then doing what I'm there, making yourself vulnerable and the fear that someone will say, you disgraced yourself when you're trying your best yeah. to give back. And we all feel that gang. And little sayings have got me through life is, in life you either do or you don't. You either stand still or you have that driving force to push you forwards. Mm. And in my darkest days, a saying that always got me right was, You'll be all right in the morning, son. Or you're as good as anyone and better than most. Brilliant. Kev, I'd like to thank you for your time again. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe and share and put down um, some comments for us. So thanks for watching, guys. Thank you, Kev. Thank you.